Uh, yeah. Uh, family, y'all. Just keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh. The Pythagorean Society. We've heard of the Pythagorean Theorem. Who remind me, what's the Pythagorean Theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C squared. Boy, that's pressing some memory. So, so we, if you take one side of a, tri of a right triangle, you take one side of a right triangle and square it, plus another side of a right triangle and square it, you'll have the third side squared. Ooh, so Pythagoras was credited with that. And how interesting that we have here a whole group of disciples, of followers, who are going to be following the footsteps of this guy who had various mathematical and religious beliefs mm -hmm. and superstitions, which are going to be fascinating. So Pythagoras was an Ionian, so he came from that culture that we were talking about, moved to South Italy, about 500 years before Jesus, Iamblichus called him the leader and father of divine philosophy, a god, a daemon, or a divine man. Daemon in Greek was simply meaning a supernatural person, right? He was, he was not like the rest of us. He was, this Pythagoras was like a god. Pythagoras had a scientific spirit. And uh, Pythagoreans were aesthetic and religious, simply meaning that they had Math became for them a sort of religion, and their religion was math. So it's going to be fascinating to follow what it is that they say. They believed in metempsychosis, metempsychosis, that the soul, that when you die, the soul goes out of you and lives beyond death. How interesting that we have this belief that, oh, that person died. I went to the funeral home, saw the body in the casket, but you know what? <coughs> that was just that person's body. What happened? The soul came out of the body. Metempsychosis, it goes even a step further. The soul comes out of the body and goes into, whoa, another being. Interesting. So whether that's another person, or a tree, or a bird, or a stone, whatever it is. The soul comes out of one thing and goes into another. Almost like the Eastern belief. What do we call the Eastern belief? In reincarnation, right? Reincarnation, right? So we're born as one being, and then we're born again as another being. That's metempsychosis. Xenophanes wrote a poem in which Pythagoras told the person to stop beating a dog. Stop beating that dog! Why? Because we're going to the story, he recognized his friend's voice in the dog's yelping, right? You can hear the dog yelping. <laughs> his friend's voice, another proof of metempsychosis, right? Yes, my friend is not dead. Oh, give me that dog. I'll take him home. Good to see you again, friend. Right? It's a proof of metempsychosis. So, if the soul survives beyond death, then it seems we need to be focusing on the soul. You follow me? If the soul survives death, people, then the body is not important. This body is just the vessel, the carrier of your soul for this lifetime. But the good news is, after you shake this mortal coil, you get rid of this body, you get a new one. Hopefully not a dog that's going to be beaten. Right? <laughs> So soul training and soul purification were important for the Pythagoreans because it was all about your soul. And how are you taking care of your soul? That's the question, Jamie, for you this evening. How are you taking care of your soul? Because if you don't have a few ideas, I have a few ideas for you. We can take care of that through silence. If you want to go back to the back bedroom by yourself in silence, we totally respect that. That's the way you're taking care of your soul. Ooh, what are Christians going to do with concepts like this, right? Of silence... Prayer, right? Yeah. Prayer and meditation, meditation. And contemplation, all right? So how it is that soul training can involve silence? It can also involve music. How fascinating with music. Have you ever seen a guitar or ever played a guitar? If you've seen a guitar, those strings, it's simply, it's simply a string. The guitar is simply this set of strings. 
Wait, and then there are different brackets on the guitar so that people know where to put their fingers. So if I put my finger here, it's going to make one pitch. If I put it here, it's going to make another. Here, it's going to make another. It's all mathematical. The Pythagoreans had figured this out. Depending on where you put your finger on that string, it makes a different sound. The guitarists know this. And as a result, it's all mathematical. If you want me to play a scale, that scale is absolutely mathematical. In fact, musicians call it whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. They know exactly how many string, exactly how many brackets they have to cross in order to play a scale, starting on any string in any place. It's all math. Musicians are just mathematicians. They just don't know it. They're expressing it a different way. That's why I'm not musically talented. <laughs> math is not my forte. <laughs> math is not your forte. No. Okay, so there you go. Music is one way of soul purification. Good news for those of you who are not so tuned to math. The other way of, of soul purification, soul training, comes through, good news, math. Right? So at least they had three different routes for soul training. You can do it in silence, you can do it in music, you can do it in math. Ooh, something for everyone is that. Some of the religious practices, I love reading this only because we don't know what was going on with these, but the Pythagoreans didn't eat beans. I love that. <laughs> They didn't know the protein they were missing, I guess. <laughs> well, you thought they, they appreciated it because they studied music so much. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you say, we don't know why they didn't abstain from things like beans. We don't know why they did anything on here. It's just that in their writings, we know that in the same way that the Jews had the things that they didn't didn't do, like mm -hmm. didn't eat pork and didn't, didn't eat cray, crawfish and lobster and shrimp and catfish and so many other things, they had the things that they didn't didn't do too. Some of the things that they didn't do is they didn't eat beans. They didn't walk on the main streets of the town. Okay. They didn't step on clipped fingernails. Whoa, I almost stepped on a fingernail. Right? They didn't sit on bushel baskets. Thou shalt not sit on a bushel basket. And they always erased the traces of their pots in the ashes. So Nana just took that pot off the fire. Did you see what she just did? She just sort of uh, spread the ash so that you couldn't tell that the pot was there. Why did she do that? Because she's a Pythagorean. Well, why did the Pythagoreans do that? Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> right. So that was some of the things that the Pythagoreans did. Some of their mathematical beliefs, ooh, now it gets fascinating because we all know the Pythagorean theorem or the, we know of that a, plus, a squared plus b plus a squared equals c squared. But what we don't know is of other beliefs by the Pythagoreans, such as the things that all things are numeral, numerable, all things can be counted. You can count everything in this universe. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the books on the shelf. Should we start counting the books on the shelf? Everyone together? One, two, three. I mean, everything can be counted. Everything. That's the Pythagoreans. Everything can be counted. Everything can be expressed numerically. Everything can be expressed in a number, whether it's books or people or anything, you name it, you can express it in a number. In fact, all things are numbers. Who? That's going to be, let, let's hold that for a few lines because in letter E, we're going to see how it is that all things can be numbers. Letter B, relationships can be expressed in numerical proportion. How interesting that they were thinking of proportions already, right? Mm -hmm. How it is that things add up to become other things. How it is that one thing is larger or smaller in proportion to another. Pitch depends on length. Oh, they had guitars figured out before guitars were invented. Back then they had lyres, L-Y-R-E, right? The lyre was a similar sort of instrument. They figured out how it is that if you stretch a string, it's simply the pitch depends on how long it is. The longer the string, there's a piano I see, right? The longer strings are going to be the lower notes. Lower notes are longer. Shorter strings, higher notes. Bing. Oh, they had figured that out back then. Pitch depends on length. Inter intervals depend on numerical ratios. How interesting then that you can put bars on that guitar, on that guitar, whatever we call that part of the guitar, simply because that there's a ratio, there's a numerical ratio, a bar goes every so often, 
because that's the next pitch. And musical intervals can be expressed numerically, which is why we say that in any scale, it's always whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, because you take on the guitar, a whole means you go two boxes at a time, a half you just go one box. So if you go two boxes, then two boxes, then one, then two and then two and then two and then one, it's all mathematical. It is entire, like playing the guitar is entirely mathematical. The guitar is math for right brain people. The harmony of the universe depends on numbers, that there's just some harmony in the universe, this cosmic harmony. So how can we say that all things are numbers? Because numbers can be expressed spatially. A point is one. A line consists, it simply joins two points, point, point, join the two with a line. So a line is two. So far so good? Once you create three, if you put three points and connect the three points, that's a surface, right? If I put three points on this wall, right? They're all on the same surface. Any three points become, can be drawn into a surface, but then four points, and now we have space, three dimensions. Then figured out three dimensions that the Pythagoreans did. So anything that has three dimensions, like a human body, can be expressed with a number, four. One is a point, two is a line, three is a surface, four is a three-dimensional body. The, the sacred symbol of the Pythagoreans was the tetractus. What is a tetractus? That's the symbol that we see with ten dots. One dot on one row, then two dots in the next row, then three dots in the next row, then four dots in the next row. Have we seen that before? So that wh how, whatever way you turn that triangle, it's always four rows of dots. Interesting. Well, how interesting, I mean, how it was that they were seeing the same, the same was, the number one, the number two, the number three, and the number four. How does it all those add up to ten? It's all math. They were totally fascinated by this. Pythagorean cosmology. So what shape is the earth? Is the earth a floating disk, or is it a pillar? No, it's the Pythagoreans who are going to tell us that the earth is what shape? Spherical. It's round, it's a ball. And is the earth in the center of the universe? How interesting. The Bible tells us the earth is in the center of the universe. Everything goes around the earth. How interesting. That's not what the Pythagoreans believe. They believe that the earth goes around something else. The earth is not the center. The earth and the planets and the sun all revolve around the central fire or the hearth of the universe. We're simply on this spherical earth rotating around something else. They had this thought back in the 500s BC. What's the impact of the Pythagoreans? Plato was no doubt influenced by their conceptions of the soul, because now we're going to have all sorts of writers who are talking about the soul. The Pythagoreans talk about the soul, so let's talk about the soul. After the body dies, what happens? The body's there, but the soul has left. That's the difference between a dead guy and a live guy. What's the only difference? The soul is in the one. Right? Right now, Margie's soul is in her. The day when Margie's soul leaves her body? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's those notions of the soul by the Pythagoreans. Metempsychosis, which they were simply trying to figure out what happens. What happens with that dead body? That dead body? Don't worry. It's just the soul has come out. The soul is on its way to another body. Oops, do you hear that dog yapping? <laughs> <laughs> right? 